Hello and welcome to another episode of Who Corner to Corner podcast. My name's Jeff and as always I'm joined by my good friend Paul. Hello, good morning. Yes, that is me. How are you today? Yeah, I'm alright mate. Yeah, it's a bit cold out there. Well actually you know it's warmer because there's no more snow. It's that's just yeah. rain. <laughs> it's rained uh, all weekend yeah. here and got rid of the snow and the ice so that's yeah. been, been quite but good. I like the snow. The snow's good. Yeah, my kids were a bit disappointed, but hopefully we'll uh, get a little bit more over over the Christmas period. So uh, we're not uh, on our own again today, are we? No, no, indeed. We have company, very we esteemed do. company, Mr. So, Jeff. Um, we're joined by a wonderful actress who um, would be familiar to many Whovians the world over. Um, so you might know her from her audio adventures with Colin Baker's Sixth Doctor, where she plays Mrs. Constance Clark. Or you might know her from her appearance on screen as Tallulah, in Daleks in Manhattan and Evolution of the Daleks, uh, which was opposite David Tennant's uh, Tenth Doctor. And you might also know her from shows like Spooks and Vexed and the Sister Boniface Mysteries. I hope I've said that right. Um, So uh, (laughs) welcome to Miranda Raisin. Thank you. Hello. Thank you for having me. Uh, Thank you for joining us. How are you today? Very well, thanks very much. Very well. And actually quite relieved that there's no snow anymore because we were just having to tell our daughter that every bit of snow, we live in London, every bit of snow you pick up could have a dog turd in it. Oh, it could. (laughs) Yes. Please, please don't (laughs) throw it at anybody. What Um, a lovely image. I know, isn't it? Just. I'm going to take that uh, advice and pass that on to my kids, actually. (laughs) (laughs) You never know. You're always three throws away from a turd. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah we joke but yeah you, you you never know so yeah just always always look out for the color of it we're, we're in the yeah. country so if you pick up anything it could be a bigger turd than dogs possibly yeah yeah, yeah nobody wants anyway to moving on yeah anyway yeah. <laughs> yeah. start as we mean to go on throughout the show yes exactly. <laughs> So, Miranda, we've got quite a few uh, questions for you today to cover yes, both do- Doctor do. Who uh, and your Ooh, other work. Okay. Um, but our first question is, uh, how is Colin Baker's piano working out for you? <laughs> oh, great. We love it. We love it. It's brilliant. And it's uh, we've got all his kids' old music books as well. Oh, wow. Um, so, you know, his, his grown-up daughters, and they've got, you know, kind of Lally Loves, I don't know, whatever, or kind of they've, <laughs> they've written on them, and, yeah, all the sort of grade ones. No, it's lovely, really lovely. The only, you know, it's there's a time in the morning. It's a bit like no, no, not before yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. Before school. But <laughs> no, no, it's place. it's lovely. It's the coziest thing in the house. We've had to kind of, you know, the rest of the house just has to live up to it now. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We we spoke to Colin a little while ago, and he, he told we us did. that uh, you you'd commandeered it from yeah. him. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We said, well, we're talking to you soon, so we'll we'll make sure to ask. Well, I think it was it. so it was of such sentimental value mm. to to him and to them. They just really wanted it to go to a home where there might be a... So now she will learn whether she yeah. wants to or not. She's forced by, <laughs> by who tradition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, tell us a bit about Mrs. Constance Clark for anyone who's listening that doesn't know about your Big mm. Finish character. So Constance is a wren um, and she's very much... Um, she, she's a... Well... I was going to say a widow. In fact, her husband is missing. Um, yeah. It is sort of resolved a bit in one of the episodes <gasps> of what's happened to him. Um, but uh, she's effectively, I mean, lives like, you know, a, a woman who is um, slightly in, in limbo in, in that yeah. way. Um, and she's feisty, bright, logical, <laughs> very different to me, um, <laughs> very much uh, somebody suited to working in that sort of enigma mm. environment. Um, and she's, I think she and, the, and he's quite, she's quite a different companion for, for the doctor because, um, for that particular doctor, because they're quite a sort of, um, they're, they're a good match for each mm. other. Uh, and they're almost like a sort of husband and wife. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and they, they bicker and they, but they also have a good kind of understanding of each other. And they're also, dare I say, quite middle class. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes we have a bit of a kind of posh off, you know, the, yeah. the, the, the expressions that are, that are written for us. I think the writers a have a good time off. sometimes. Like with, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I'm trying to think what else. I mean, she's, she's also, you know, she's got a kind of cheeky side. And I think... They they've been quite careful mm. not to write her, and I've tried to be, you know, careful not to play her. Although of course the writing is the mo- most important thing, uh, as being sort of too austere or cold, because it's quite easy with that environment and mm. that sort of accent and that, but that period of sort of um, chin upness, 
uh, to it would be quite easy to to sound a little bit of a cold fish, but actually she she is she has a sort of cosy side. Yeah, um, I, I think that's that's right. You know, when you first meet her in in crisscross, she's very kind of. Uh, you know, business, isn't she, kind of thing, you know. And um, But there's an immediate um, kind of mutual respect between her and the Doctor. Yes. And, and like you say, that kind of, uh, you know, old married couple type thing between them. They're, they're quite yes. evenly matched, I think, in, in terms of kind of, you know, like you said, she's quite logical and quite smart and things, and he, he respects yeah. that. But then as, as the stories go on, Constance kind of, you know, she softens up a bit and warms up, and you know, there's there's quite a few moments, like you say, where she's quite cheeky, and you can, you know, you see behind the the, the front a little bit, I think, yeah. and then particularly when Flip comes along as well, who's, you know, completely different, and yes. you know, I, I really like that pairing, but be, be, between the the two of them, and and yeah. you know, the trio as a whole as well. Yeah, I think yeah. That actually the Flip um, dynamic as well, you know, is is a really good one because they. they she is a good foil against mm. the boshness, but also yeah. against the sort of, you know, she is just a, a younger energy and a and a um, and more questioning and more um, and I think calls them out, you know. So mm. she calls her Connie, and Connie is Connie, and that's it. You know, there's no kind of <laughs> Miss Clark or airs yeah. and graces and and certain things. I think as well, it's it's it would be important in that in that universe to have a development of somebody who's. Mm. who lives in the 1940s and obviously you know grew up 20s and 30s and then is suddenly around uh you know a, a, a modern day girl and mm. and obviously the doctor is always quite kind of modern day because he's you know he knows all and sees all so yeah. um you know if 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 she was just rooted in being mm. of that period it would get a bit dull i think well that's, that's one of the, the good things about big finish as well you know that the, we were talking about it the other day weren't we paul with the sort of yeah you know the the audio only it. companions you know they they have a good growth and you know a development across them mm. it's not just kind of you know the same uh situation for the character each time you know they they do develop across their yeah. their storylines which, which is really good so yeah. Oh, have you got a question, Paul? Well, I just thought I'd stick something in there, like, you know, just to remind people I'm here. <laughs> Hello. I was, I was just going to say, actually, lis- lis- listening to you, that um, what, one of the things I like about Mrs. Mrs. Constance Clark is that there's an authority to her, yeah. which although she, you know, she does evolve and kind of widen her horizons throughout her, her stories, that authority never really slips it's always there she's always in charge and very of herself and I think there's times when that is kind of challenged and shaken but the strength that comes from that authority is always the thing that seems to pull her back I I really really enjoy that that consistency it's it's brilliant yeah it's it's fun to play I think you know any session and for me it happens almost more with video games or 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 Mm. doing something like Doctor Who sessions where you leave feeling just either you're walking a bit taller or you just feel mm. a bit kind of jollier, a bit tougher, a bit something, you know, and, and, and it has to be kind of, again, good quality writing that you're working with, but it can have a, an effect on the rest of your day. It's mm. like a good therapy session. Oh, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> you know, you just kind of, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> through yeah. acting, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, how how did your big finish work come your way? Because you, you did some bits before Mrs. Constance, Clark, didn't you? Yeah, so I actually can't, I I was thinking about the other day I can't quite remember but I think it was about 2007 or 8 the first thing they asked me to do and it Mm. wasn't Doctor Who but I can't remember what it was Um, uh, and then they got me to be I think I was a baddie in um, in a couple of them and then and then I did a Jago and Lightfoot Oh yeah, and yeah, Paul, you're a big fan of those, aren't you? Yeah, I oh, do they like Shago and Lightfoot. Yeah, I think they're gosh, fabulous. They yeah. were just so um, incredible. Trevor Baxter and Chris Benjamin, wasn't it? They were absolutely brilliant men, and and um, and it was just, and I think, I mm. think in a funny way, the audition for Big Finish is sort of, you know, how much you chat with everyone at lunch. You know, they, the, Toby, <laughs> who who runs Bus Base Studios, he, he um cooks you probably I don't know if you've heard about them on this podcast but he cooks these incredible lunches they're sort of legendary we, we've heard about the lunches and we, I mean, we've asked a couple of other um, have, big yeah. big Finnish uh, actors about them and apparently they haven't been doing them since Covid no so, I know 
I the, know, the I legend know. has been shattered. I know the waistlines are, are, are liking it, but the, but not, <laughs> nothing else. No, I mean he's incredible, and so and of course it's actors. So you've got you've always got gluten intolerant or vegan or mm. vegetarian or whatever, and there's just always everything for everybody. And it's a real you know you sit with a plate on your knee, proper kind of hour and a bit. You know, it's not a rush. It's very much a you know let's enjoy our food. Quite French in its ethos of a lunch break. And you just sit and, and natter. And I really think that is mm. a probably um, based on, on my ability to just not shut up. <laughs> they, they, they were like, do you want to come back? And you obviously like it here. Um, so I, can't, I actually don't know how long ago it was that I started playing Constance, but I think it was nearly 10 years ago, maybe. Yes, it's been I a while, I think. Yeah, C- mm. Criss Cross was the first one, wasn't that? It was a little while ago. And, and then maybe it was 2014, every... something like that. And it was a long, long time ago. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, everyone you read, you think, um, as I do with most scripts generally, you know, you think, is this the one where I get flung into into the cosmos <laughs> the forever? Or, yeah, exactly. Yeah, shut yeah, but, in a dark void forever. But and, even um, if that uh, happened, there'd, there'd be, you know... The, there'd be a way the, to come back. Yeah, the timey-wimey yeah. stuff, you know, there could be adventures we haven't heard before that, or there'd be a way to come back after That's it. True. You know. Well, yeah. that is true, although there, I think every drama has its get out, you know, it's equivalent mm. of getting run over on Albert Square, you know. Yeah, the, the yeah getting in the where, back of the taxi. Yeah, 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 some, <laughs> yeah right, yeah, something where they... they I'm going to Liverpool, not, no, I'm yeah. going to Manchester. Yeah, Manchester, yeah, something where, yeah, exactly. Taxi rolls up. Um, but you've got a chance of that, but if you're, if you're squashed on Albert yeah. Square... Then <laughs> there's very little coming back from it. So. Yeah, but I suppose if if no one saw it and it wasn't shown on camera, you know that would be the get did out. Did it really for happen? It. Yeah, true. did it really happen? Yeah, did it really yeah, happen? Quantum yeah. that is just <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so um, we've got a question from uh, Twitter here, one, one of our first Twitter ones. So this is some stuff uh, at stuff Ian likes, who's one of our regular uh, listeners, and he says, if you uh, have, do you have any ambitions or wishes for Mrs. Clark on audio? Oh. Wowzers. Um, I mean, I should probably have thought about that before. I would say, very boringly, more of the same. I love it when mm. Colin and I get to kind of run around together, um, you know, in, in audio speaking. Um, but, <laughs> it's, uh, it's running it, on the spot, yeah, really, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, it is, it yeah. really is. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, I, I love having stuff with him. But also, you know, when you have kind of fun guests in and and do something that's completely mm. different you know where you go off on your own and and come back with each other i mean i think um i love the, the i love doing the, the the creepier ones you know i i the when it's Ooh. when you have real um See, big smiles sort of from jeff there he loves oh, really? the creepy so, spooky m- stories yeah. miranda we we did a, an episode recently where we talked about some yeah. of our favorite doctor who books and some of our favorite big finish audios <laughs> yeah and i was like so this one i like it's a bit spooky and a bit creepy <laughs> and then this other one i like is a bit spooky and a bit creepy and uh, Paul I was, was like i started to detect a yeah <laughs> that was the right. theme hmm. so yeah. for example static is one of my favorites with, yeah. with you and colin in and, yes, and I yes. recommended that to you, didn't I, Paul? You and did, and I listened to it because yeah. I'm good like that. <laughs> you are good, and and it is really creepy and, and unsettling mm. and, and a yeah. great idea. So yeah, like like you said, I I love them when they're like that because the show, the show itself kind of particularly in like Tom Baker's era does a bit of kind of horror and yeah, you know, leans into that, but less so in in the modern series. You know, there's there's yes. little bits, but Big Finish, I think because of the beauty of sound design and that kind of stuff that they can do mm. yeah. they, they really go into it so like the Lovecraft invasion was also quite kind of spooky and you know or, or weird more weird spooky I yes. think you know um, and, and that was another great story and, and like you said you kind of got to go off on your own a bit in that one didn't yeah. you and, and, then come and back also the other thing I mean I'm not an expert on it but the the, the thing of when you know the creepiest films the creepiest things they're not the most high budget you mm. know, so so when I, I didn't watch Doctor Who as a child because I found it so frightening and it was almost the kind of low budgetness, you know, that BBC sound stage with yeah. the kind of low dry ice because you probably yeah. couldn't afford to have dry ice all the way up, you know, and the, <laughs> oh, maybe there, actually you wouldn't see anything, but you know, the, the, the way that it was kind of that sort of echoey, the quite bad sound design mm. you know the, the or, simple minimal almost in a, absolutely you know, it was just had this kind it. of stark mm. feeling which you know the a team and street hawk didn't have so i was kind yeah. of watching those but but now with sound even though that from a sound point of view they have a terrific budget and fullness and everything else i think mm. it really lends itself just having a certain in this case the visual 
um, stimuli stripped away, yeah. certain things sort of pared back. It just gives it that kind of werewolf in Paris, you know, the kind of something where, um, yeah, yeah. which obviously was visual, but you know, where it's, there's so much left to the imagination um, yeah. that, that I think one's imagination can actually fill in um, gaps in a, in a creepier, in a more horrifying yeah, way exactly. than yeah, when you, you see it, when yeah, you see the you shark, go, you know. Go right. as wild as your mind w will allow you with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So we've got an another question here uh, from Prydonian06 on Twitter. Um, if Mrs. Clark could have any adventure with any other doctor, who would you go for and why? <sighs> oh my goodness. I mean, the... The, the first that come into my head is probably not the most original answer would be Tom Baker or David Tennant. I mean, I, I, I never, I've never really watched Tom Baker's Doctor mm. Who's, but everybody yeah. that, um, that, uh, so David Warner, who, who has voiced oh, yes. quite a lot for Big Finish, who's mm. obviously a complete legend and, and he played Hamlet, a legendary production of Hamlet, um, in the sixties. And he wore this kind of big scarf and everything. And it was all yeah. kind of based on um, Tom Baker's Doctor Who. You know, when you have actors who come in to do Big Finish, they talk about him in such a way that to start with, I was like, all right, you know, can't, it can't be that brilliant. But actually, <laughs> you know, it's been so all-encompassing, the kind yeah. of, um, the, the, I think he really made it a, a religion, if I'm allowed to say that. You know, he, but he was this sort of... Um, uh, again, I, I don't want to, you know, I'm not an aficionado on, on any of it, but mm. um, I, there's something so compelling about him and just his voice. When I've heard yeah, him do yeah. voiceover on anything, you know, narrating it's rich, something, it's it? quite very incredible. Yeah. yeah, totally. And I'm sure he'd be very naughty. And, um, <laughs> and David is just, is, as I'm sure I'm the 80th person on your podcast to say, he's the <laughs> nicest actor. He's just mm. so... Um, you know, the, the, the number one on the call sheet really sets the tone um, behaviourally down a cast yeah. list and, yeah. and across a crew list, actually, as well. And so if you have somebody like David Tennant, who is patient and kind and has an incredible work ethic and ha never messes up a line or never, but is very kind if somebody else does, you know, mm. that kind of thing, you, you actually can't have people crashing about being a huge ego um, mm. because... It just well no they wouldn't last five minutes just, you know? yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And they certainly wouldn't be invited back to the party that, so that's uh, the thing isn't it yeah and he's just fun he's just really mm. fun and really funny and and yeah so um uh but but my my doctor who growing up even though i didn't really watch it but was yeah. sylvester mccoy uh, sylvester okay. mccoy was the sort of the face yeah. that i had when i when i when i was asked to do doctor who in 2007 the, the television doctor who um I sound like my mother. The television <laughs> Doctor Who. Um, that w it was Sylvester McCoy was I had Sylvester, in my head. Yeah. yeah, same as you, Jeff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I was, was watching your Sylvester, you know, when I was young, mm. and you know, can yeah. remember when it when it finished, and uh, you know, being disappointed by it. And I, I've told Paul this before, and I remember being at my um, grandparents down in Cornwall and, and saying, oh, can I, can I go and watch Doctor Who? And my dad saying, no, no, you, you know, we're here, for, you know, grand and grand. And my grand going, oh, let him, let him watch it, dear. You know, and, and going in and <laughs> sitting in the lounge and watching it. You yeah. know, and and it, it does sort of, you know, it sticks in your mind, doesn't it? That That's something when it's kind of important to you like that, when, you know, yeah. at any age, really. But yeah, yeah. you know. And, and yeah, Paul, well, they obviously you know, saw something like, no, no, this isn't mm. just him wanting, you know, to get away with watching telly. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. um, and, and like for you, Paul, you know, it kind of started a bit before that, didn't it? Yeah, thanks for that, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you might point out I'm a little bit older. That's fine. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting what you're saying, Miranda, about uh, Tom Baker, because I think, I mean, for throughout the whole end of the 70s and, and way into the 80s, even when he wasn't the doctor anymore, that his, his dominance, his presence and that silhouette that he had with the hat mm -hmm. and the scarf and everything yes. else was just... Doctor Who it was just the iconic yeah, for, Doctor for, Who silhouette, wasn't it? Yeah, for a lot of people, you know, his uh, his Doctor and his the image of it is Doctor mm. Who. And you know, I was watching something on Netflix recently, um, the Midnight Club, I think it was, and, and one of the the kids they dressed up for Halloween, and he had the floppy hat and the scarf and stuff. Right. And someone said, "Who are you?" He said, "I'm Doctor Who." You know, and and in, <sighs> in a kind of teen orientated show, yeah. to to have that kind of a reference mm. in it you know it shows how kind of enduring his doctor is still yeah 
yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I think um, yeah, Mrs. Mrs. Clark and the Fourth Doctor would be great. Maybe we should petition Big Finish. That to would be a good get one. On it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'd, 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 be I'd great pay them. <laughs> um, and of course, with David Tennant, you worked with him on TV as well, yeah. didn't you? In the in Daleks yeah. of Manhattan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just mm. t- yeah, as I said, total total dream and and um, and yeah, and it was it was this extraordinary world because actually I I suppose it had there'd been Christopher Eccleston's Doctor and this was I think it was the third series of David Tennant was it David Tennant's second or David Tennant's third I can't remember I can't remember. It was his but second, wasn't it? I think it was, it was his, his second. Th- it was the third, the third series yeah. of the show, yeah. So it, ha- it was already become, but it wasn't quite, mm. to my memory anyway, it was sort of still emerging as this. Yeah, it was still finding itself, you know, yeah. wasn't it? Mm, um, still testing and so, the format. <clears throat> yeah. So I was sent the, the character um, and was told, you know, that uh, she, I can't remember who they said it was sort of based on, I think they just said, you know, mm. that certain sort of 1930s New York, Manhattan. Um but I had just watched what is now, what has since become one of my favourite films, uh, which is Adam's Rib um, with Judy Holiday, And she, and in fact, Judy Holiday is a supporting character, but she won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. Yeah. And, um, and she, she just sort of had this way of talking that, that was, <laughs> I was like, I want to do that. So, you know, whatever happens, I'm going to shoehorn that into a yes. job at some point. And, um, and then, you know, this came up. So I already went, when I got it, it's very roundabout answer to your question, but when I um, when they asked me to do it, I was like, this is something to really have fun with. But you never quite know until you arrive mm. on your job whether it's going to be that kind of feeling or mm. whether, you know, you're going to have a director who says, no, I absolutely <laughs> Uh, what are you doing, Miranda? Exactly. Uh, that's not what we ordered that's at not all. At all. That's yeah, not that's it. Ordered. Um, <laughs> but actually, everybody was was game, yeah. and and he was, you know, David Tennant was, um, as I say, just mm. a total kind of charm and fun and funny, and um, and also Freema. Freema was brilliant. Oh yes, she yeah, was, yeah. She was lovely, mm. and we're still in touch. Um, she's a really great girl, and yeah, it was a yeah. big yeah. responsibility for her, you know, suddenly to. It was a, um, kind of her first sort of major stuff, really, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was, and uh, and she absolutely, she knew she wore it so well, and she and, did. Um, yeah. She she can't have been as relaxed as she seemed, but she seemed, you know, a lot of the time when actors are tense or insecure, that's when they behave badly, and that's when they can be less than nice. <laughs> um, but she was. You know, I, I'm not saying she was tense or insecure, but I, if she if she was, you it didn't show. It didn't, didn't show at all. Yeah. She was totally, um, yeah. uh, just just grateful to be there, and and you know, and we all yeah had a great time. Great yeah, she, time. She's brilliant. Yeah. And Andrew Garfield as well. Hello. Of course. Yes. Yeah. 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 This yeah. was a hotbed of talent, wasn't it? You know, because yeah. I mean, you, you as well. Because I remember, um, I remember you from from Spooks, mm. and I remember when I saw your name in Daleks, I thought, yeah, Miranda Raisin from oh. Spooks, brilliant. Oh. You know, I didn't Andrew what whoever I had yeah, no, yeah. Idea. <laughs> no idea. You know, you were the yeah, star yeah. as far as I was concerned well, in that show because I remember so your much. character in Spooks. And oh my goodness, sorry, brief diversion, but she went through the mill. And I yeah. was I was riveted throughout. Because it's quite a few series you did of that, wasn't it? Was it I did five three, series? series of it. Five series. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, spanned five. I think. I yeah, yeah. Halfway yeah. through four and left and halfway through eight. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she she did, and and I, I believe uh, one of the the sort of scenes storylines I did is still one of the most complained about moments in oh, is it? Brilliant. But, you know you always want a few of those yeah yeah <laughs> um yeah just for for it's kind of um uh the there, there, there's quite a it. few in spooks though isn't there they, uh, it, it kind of pushed the envelope there as were. to what might well, be considered started, acceptable it started with the Lisa Faulkner which I think is ahead mm. of my moment um in terms of complaints the Lisa Faulkner deep fat fryer incident i do you know i i've never been able to shake that from from series one i think that one I think was, it was it? possibly the most shocking thing it was horrific show, because because really she horrific. was the most famous person on the mm. show at the time because you know nobody but matthew and and keely and david yellow weren't yet yeah yeah they were faces, still up and coming was, yeah and she'd been in a hobby city for years and she was yeah. beautiful and and um you know playing the kind of fresh rookie and it, yeah, it happened like yeah. three episodes in, in and the I, most brutal. It was it was awful. I yeah. do you know I I can't watch series one of Spooks purely because of that moment. I was just too yeah. 
too horrified by it. And it wasn't like I was a kid at the time. I was, you know, I was a grown adult right, watching a, right. an adult show. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I can't handle this. Yeah. And oh, all the publicity was her too. All the posters mm. advertising spooks of this new show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Were, were all her standing in the middle. Mm. You know, they really, they, it was a pretty fearless thing to do as, yeah. as producers to get a very likable lead actress mm. and stick her head in a fryer. Yeah, and then shoot her afterwards. And then, oh yeah, because you know? it was as if the fat fry wasn't oh, enough. Yeah. I think her hand went in first as a sort of torture thing, and that's pretty awful. And then, yeah, they they put her face in it, and then and then she got shot through. Oh, it was yeah. awful. I just you know, it's like, yeah. where's Barry Whitehouse when you need her? It's a champion but it, decency then I think in TV. It, it, no, it, it was a good exactly. moment though. It set it was, that precedent um, though as well for that. It show did. Of, yeah. of, um, no one's safe. No, no exactly. Anything can happen mm. to any of these characters. Yep. They're not safe at all. And I think that's a good thing yeah. for a TV show to, yeah. to have. It was quite funny. They had a, a last episode, last ever episode um, yeah. screening, I think at the Electric or somewhere in Notting Hill. And and the 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 last episode, I can't remember, one of the characters walked through, probably mm. Harry and um, Peter Firth character, walked through the sort of um, MI5 yeah. sort of memorial <laughs> And there were just all these names of all that, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, I remember the day he was told. Oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, totally. And then, you know, and then it got to like Joe Portman. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Sayonara. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, was that quite a big launching grand, grand for Because I know you'd, you'd done acting before that, hadn't you? But was that yeah. kind of your first big major role in it? In a it was my first sort of regular in a series. Mm. I'd done a few kind of, you know, three parters or, or that yeah. kind of thing. I'd done, I'd done a, a bit. But um, and I'd done quite a lot of theatre, but it was the first, um, yeah, the first regular in a series. The first thing yeah. like, you know, they're going to pay you this per episode. And and even though it wasn't amazing money at the time, <laughs> I just was like, they're going to do what? And they're going to give it to me yeah. again and again. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then I remember getting to the end of season mm. four, which I joined in season four. Um, or series four, as we call it in England, and um, and saying to Rupert Henry Jones, yeah. I was like, you know, this is amazing, and I can't wait. And next year, I went. And he was like, no, 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 never talk about next year. We don't know oh. when we're going to be commissioned. And I was like, oh, so that's a thing, mm. you know, with the world of like never yeah. never sit on you know never rest on your laurels because actually we might not be recommissioned at all. So then there was that anxiety mm. of the year too, yeah. which there has been ever since. Um, although the series I not not shoehorn it in, but the series I'm doing now yeah. was um, you know, the last series was pre-COVID. And we sort of thought, mm. oh, that's probably cancelled and gone away, even though nothing official's happened. And then, you know, and then it came back again. So you kind of never quite know what's going on. Yeah, no, it's, you it's, don't know. But it's it's part of it when you're an actor or even you know a filmmaker or you know, whatever department you're in. You, you never know what's around the corner, do you? And right. you know you have to yeah. kind of treat each job like like it could be your last and, and do your best on it. Definitely. And because you just never know. And you know it's 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 quite a scary thing. And I think particularly for actors as as well, you know to you know be like you said you know d- doing a show but you don't know if it's coming back again and yeah you know, there is there is no guarantees and you know Paul we've had it with with our stuff you know similar sort of thing where you think something's going to happen and you know you get oh, mm. great it's exciting and I've seen this with other camera guys I know oh you know I've got this project that's going to be you know six months solid or something and I'm turning down other work for it and then it falls through mm. and I think you you have to just keep Looking, keep your options open and, yeah. you know. Look at Henry Cavill, Superman. He yeah. thought he was going to be doing Superman and he left he, Witcher he and quit, now he's yeah. not. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't oh, that. I can't not? That stress. No, no, apparently no. not. No, no, no. And they, they they gave him permission to kind of tweet out that he was yes. returning as Superman in, uh, you know, the next bunch of DC films. And turns out mm-hmm. he's not. They For the next Superman film, they're focusing on Superman as a boy. Yeah. So they don't want. They decided they didn't then want Henry Cavill to do yeah. it. And the studio leadership changed in between him being, yeah. uh, you know, announced know. as returning, and then they were like, "Yeah, we, we don't actually." Want I, th- him I thought now. James Gunn was a decent guy, and now yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm shaken. I'm shaken, mate. Yeah. But they must give him some recognition. Something. I, I don't oh, know. Yeah. I don't he, know. He'll have a what do they call it? Pay or play? Where you know, because mm, there's quite a famous one where um. Nicolas Cage was going to be Superman years ago and then it didn't happen and he still earned 20 million or something for it. Wow. <laughs> I'll take that. That'll be right, <laughs> yeah. wouldn't it? Okay, yeah, I'll, 
I mean, wow. you know, I'd love to be Superman, but I'll, <laughs> I'll just take the money. It's yeah, fine. Don't worry. You, for that, you're going to yeah. get some young guy playing it. And, it, it's, and just... it's only actors who mind. It's really funny. Um, yeah. I, I did a film uh, when where she was the, my first job back, having had mm. my, my daughter, and it was all quite, you know, and it was a, a big studio Was, movie. was this in and, South um, Africa? No, it wasn't. It was in England. And I'm not oh. in the final cut, I might add. Oh. And I had a reasonably, I had quite a lot to do yeah. in the film and um, didn't make the final cut. Uh, for, for, I mean, they actually reshot the, an entire storyline. They did like weeks and weeks of reshoots. Oh, my goodness. And did yeah. a whole, they went, did a whole different thing because they mm. thought that this particular storyline was maybe too dark for, for children. It was anyway. Um, and... And I sort of, most of my friends are, aren't actors. Um, mm. And I was like, you cut me for that. <laughs> and they were like, did you get paid? I was like, oh, yeah. And like, well, do you know what I mean? Because for, for anyone who's not an actor, it's like, well, you got paid, mm. right? So hold yeah. on. What's the what's the thing? And like, but, I, but what about my face being out there? Yeah. Like, <laughs> but, but you're right, though, you know, because... You need to be visible, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you know, particularly if it's something mm. big and, you know... Yeah. You just be able to say, oh yeah, you know, I, I was in this, and, and then it doesn't happen. I mean, it happened with um, the recent Thor film. Um, Lena Headey was in it, right. and and um, Peter Dinklage, and then they they cut they cut all of Peter Dinklage, yeah. They? yeah, and and because um, Lena Headey got in a bit of trouble with her agent for not paying her fees and stuff, and right. the the uh, wages and info came out. She was paid quarter of a million for Thor, and they never even used her in it. And you know, like like with what you were working on. Yeah, I guess things change a bit, and you know, but yeah. it's mad to to cast you know a, a name, you know, someone someone like yourself or you know Lino, and then not use yeah. them. It's bonkers. I think there is a lot of. I mean, there was also um, in this film there was a whole sort of section that they spent weeks, which mm. I wasn't involved in in Vietnam, with a whole you know everybody out in Vietnam, and none of that was used. You know, I, I think there are um, yeah, there's a lot of money that that sort of you think. Could that have gone to yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, on, on lots of projects, lots of yeah. things. That just, With some, um, some better planning and maybe just more confidence in what they're doing and, and less yeah. confidence. Yeah, F- few, fewer stakeholders yeah. in these things, I think, I think well. that's the difficult one. That's mm. a really difficult one. We, You know, I've been in, in shows. Um, Vexed was one, which I'm sure I can say. I don't think I'm talking yeah. about to turn. Vexed had, had a really loyal fan base. It was quite kind of divisive humour-wise, but it had a really loyal fan base and mm. and and was quite popular mm. um and is still watched by a lot of people uh and it was the 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 person who recommissioned it was very in favor and then switched commissioner you know just before mm. the 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 it aired the second series aired and um and it was sort of put on you know during the olympics kind of on a you know and and just very much with a view to I I'm not up for this and I did a channel four series called plus one which was recommissioned and then the commissioner changed and (laughs) took that away said no you know so yeah why are we talking about this it's too miserable (laughs) (laughs) it kind of leads nicely into into the next question Mm. but one of the things we want to do on on the podcast when we talk to, to to guests is talk about you know their work in general and their and their career, not mm. just the, the Doctor Who stuff, because I think it's 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 really interesting and for people who, who are actors and you know it's it's quite interesting. So to hear. looking so, to get in, involved in that, yeah. one, aren't I? We we got a few yeah. listeners yeah. there. So, so my my question, Marina, was how did you develop a love of acting? How did you get into it all in the first place? So I uh, there was a couple of elements, I suppose. My my mother when I was growing up in the eighties. Uh, in Norfolk my mother was the local Anglian newsreader oh. and um, she used to so I would have been kind of four or five I suppose and mm. used to occasionally go into work with her I think she read sort of six o'clock news and um, probably a handful of times I went in with her but they used to be really sweet and kind of put me <laughs> in the swivel chair and sort of put a bit of powder and you know you yeah. can see yourself on a monitor and it was all I mean my pervading memory of it is 
men with moustaches smoking you know, and why <laughs> it was the 80s and wires everywhere you had no no health and safety you know nothing yeah. kind of just, health and safety yeah, up to no, somebody else somebody no else's way like, blow smoke in the kid's face and the kid was hooked by the way um and the kid later took up smoking but no longer um but yeah just yeah, i remember that kind of studio yeah. buzz um but it wasn't that really that made me want to act but when i when i got into sort of doing screen I was like oh yeah I totally remember this and then the truth is I was just a really naughty kid I went to a lot of different schools I, I no have, mm, I can't imagine you being a naughty kid <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well you know <laughs> just sort of had it a million times you know kind of divorced parents and that then we and my <laughs> mom brought us up and we were a handful and um my brother and I but I mean I'm one else five but it was only my next brother Dan and I who, who grew up with my mum and and yeah. and we yeah we just I just couldn't get settled so I, I was sent to boarding school my grandfather paid for me to go to boarding <laughs> school when I was nine right. um and so I boarded from 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 nine yeah. and and the the as much as again boarding schools are a very divisive thing for good reason with good reason um, they often come with good facilities and like mm. the sport mm. and the drama. And if you've got a really naughty kid, sport and drama are pretty safe things to kind of channel them into, mm. um, I think. So it didn't stop the naughtiness, but it was definitely like the first. I do remember starting off doing kind of school plays and you know, mm. the Lambda exams and that yeah. kind of thing. And then being the first time that that teachers, that staff were like, oh, you know this is this is really good did you see her do such and such or you know um and just yeah all, all those kind of plays that kids do yeah. as well are brilliant you know mm. that all that um <laughs> the daisy pulls it off and i mean we did the millionaires we did cabaret and yeah. you, know, you do really fun so anyway it, it, i ne- literally never had another option there was never anything else mm. that i thought i wanted to do um, so once you, once you started doing the whole drama thing at school, the, that that was it then? Was it like a tunnel vision? Or Yeah, it was yeah. a tunnel vision to the point that we had mm. to fill out those stupid forms. I still think they're stupid. <laughs> oh, is this, is this uh, where um, it tells you what your, your job is yes. going to be? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so right. we were made yeah. to do it. Yeah, I think I was a vet on mine. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, excellent. I, d- I don't really like animals. <laughs> well, I just, I just got... <laughs> so somewhere, I just somewhere. You what, sorry? I just kept getting try again. <laughs> try again yeah. well, with try mine again, I again. remember like yeah. feeling so um and also as I said my grandfather sent sent mm. to boarding school my mother didn't have lots of money and they charged 75 pounds in those days to <gasps> do this bloody thing and I was like I don't wow. need to do it I know you know I can have the morning off I know what I'm doing <laughs> and um it was pages and pages and pages and and all I ticked was the drama related mm. things you know tick 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 thinking they would come back and say well you must have a job and it came back as being rigid and <gasps> something you know being yeah like, uh, close-minded and... inflexible exactly mm. that kind no. of thing and oh. and um and it was it was uh, yes so I was tunnel vision but mm. I'm pleased that I was because it, it's it's um it's a hard enough yeah thing to make a go of and yeah. so many people that I met along the way who now aren't doing it mm. or even people I was at drama school with had parents who were saying you know, you really need something to fall back on. This isn't a career, a it's not a but a plan mm. B. And a plan B is not always, it's a bit like growing up with a lot of inheritance. You know, it's not always yeah. necessarily going to be the best thing in the long mm. run. No, that's um, it. If, I, th- I, th- mm. I always think if you know that you've only got one plan, you have to make it work. you kind of got to make it and, work. And yeah. that's yeah. got to come from within, really. Mm. You've got to have that self-motivation and that drive to do it and take yeah. all the knockbacks, take all the hits, push through them and do it again and again yeah. and again. Yes. Be better and not just say, well, they don't they don't understand me. It's not about that. It's about listening to the feedback, changing your approach, perhaps, and, and learning from each experience yeah. and moving on getting the next one until you know you make it happen it has to that that's my feeling on a lot of creative yeah. um, and, careers i think and yeah. i think yeah you're, you're right Miranda. i think you know you, you have to be tunnel vision on it you know mm. like, for me I, I wanted to get into to filmmaking 
uh, I'm useless at anything else. So if it didn't work out, I didn't know what else, <laughs> you know, what else yeah, am yeah. I going to do? You know, <laughs> what else am I going to do? <laughs> uh, and um, you know, my my dad was, you know, it was ironic because he's uh, he's essentially uh, a famous fisherman. He's really well known in the fishing world. So his entire job, I mean, he had a, a fishing shop, but you know, he goes to Alaska, goes fishing, and he writes books and does TV and all this kind of stuff. Wow. But when I wanted to start filming. You know, he was like, well, I'm not sure about this. I don't think you, you know, <laughs> it's not viable. And yeah. uh, uh, but then my mum, I was working part time at, at Sainsbury's and she said, I, th I think you should leave and try it for six months. And, and if you make a bit of money and, and see how you go. So I told Sainsbury's to shove it. And uh, I, I tried it for six months, made a bit of money, tried it for another six months, another six months. And after a year and a half, I was like, I'm, I'm not rolling in it, but I'm OK. Yeah, mm. I don't think I need to keep doing six months you know, trials and see how it goes. And that was almost 20 years ago. And I think you you have to, you, you have to be, uh, you know, adamant, this is what you want to do and and, and mm. pursue every option. And, you know, we've had people on the podcast, but we are other actors, you know, like, you, you just have to follow every opportunity because you never know. Like we, we spoke to Kevin McNally and, and he was going up for a you know, American studio film after after a studio film, and he was fed up of it, not getting it. Yeah. And one day he was sitting in the garden drinking wine, and he had an audition. And his his friend said, "I'll take you to the audition." He said, "I don't want to go." And they he took him, and he got it, and it was part his of the friend Caribbean. literally put him oh, in the wow. car. His, his friend dragged him to it, you know, and it and it changed his whole life <laughs> and his his career. And like you mentioned, Miranda, you know, you meet people who, you know, are, are say like you know our age now. And, and they want to be photographers or they want to do acting or do this, that and the other. And, and they know they ne didn't pursue it, you know, early enough to be able to. And it gets harder, right. I think, as you get older, doesn't it? To, You know, when you've got kids and a mortgage and all that kind of stuff to say, I'm going to jack it in and, and go into something that, you know, may or may not work. And, you know, could, could be a bit unstable, you know. Yeah. Oh, I think so. And, and also you have to. So I remember, um, I mean, when I was pregnant with my so I have two children with yeah. my first who's now five mm. um I remember saying to my husband don't let me or maybe she had just been born I think I think I was pregnant I was like don't let me say that I want to give up mm. Mm. if I say it which I did about a few months did in you? I was like do you know what I don't want to be away from her mm. I just I don't know that I believe in that kind of rat racing because well, also the industry's changed a lot you yeah. know, since we got into it. It's very, you know, now I, I still don't have any social media. It's just not my thing. Mm -hmm. And and other things that maybe is sign of being rigid, but <laughs> I, I, it just it's just so not my my comfort zone. Yeah. And, and and I don't know how I feel about it. And um and you know, so there are elements of of uh and and also so many well no I'm not going to start no I was going to start talking about Botox and all that which actually maybe I will tiny bit but just that you know yeah. there that has all become a part of it you know suddenly so mm. many people who I started out with now have these kind of pillow faces and you know and uh, yeah. that sounds so awful but this kind of like it does actually is it's said glibly like that and out of context it just sounds mean and cruel and I don't mean it like that what I suppose it's the thing of well you're going to have to eventually. You're going to have to mm, start like there's an expectation you know, that to yeah. get anywhere you have to you're going to have again, to on fill Instagram, those you're going to have to look, yeah yeah you mm. can't have a line you can't have mm. a little that you can't you know and um and uh, so so there was quite a lot that was in conflict with being a new mother and like you know what yeah. I want to just feel filled with mm. love and the joys of Vesta and half and and actually um you know he 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 was like <laughs> not <laughs> but you know just <laughs> you told me yeah. 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 I, you know, I, I was like you, you, you yeah I was because yeah. I said you must tell me to get a grip effectively yeah, yeah, you know when yeah. when that comes out just sort of uh, you know he probably did yes dear me a tiny bit just mm. because so I didn't kind of mm. freak out but but it's um it does take a lot and then we we just when our baby was five weeks old we've all just yeah. been in Cape Town for four months we travel when he was five weeks old because that's where the work was and mm -hmm. it was a job I really wanted to do again that we didn't think was going to be recommissioned an HBO series really fun and um and you know that there was a lot to sort of there was a lot in me saying this is maybe not the right thing um it wasn't a super heavy schedule yeah. I couldn't have done it but mm. but you know we will 
they're young enough that we could do that you know in mm. a couple of years time when she's a bit more bedded in school and you know it's, yeah. it's an ever-evolving thing and I yeah. think you know you you don't want it to be all just about well this is my dream this is my everybody has to fit to my mm. ambitions and career but at the same time you know it, it's feeling free in this world yeah. is becoming more and more difficult and mm. we are free you know yeah. we have yeah. free choice and free will and if if there are certain carrots dangling from certain directions in other countries or in wherever, you know, then, you know, we should be able to follow them without. Yeah, yeah I are. agree. Yeah, no, that's good. I, I, I like that. On a Monday morning. <laughs> no, I, I, I think quite, you know, quite, it's... quite deep. It's yeah. my mindset, I think, is is everything, you know, and it's very easy to have that affected by everything you see going around you, by the pressures of you have to look a certain way, you have to behave a certain way, you have to have you know, a load of social media accounts in your toolbox and, you know, and so on and so on and so on. It's, you know, whilst there's a sort of um, the idea that now we can kind of pick and choose and we're a lot more free, it's very easy to become enslaved to yeah. other people's ideas of what your freedom actually looks like. So I think maintaining kind of strong mindset and a degree of uh, confidence about yourself is 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 very essential, but very difficult to achieve. And maybe some yeah. of that comes through experience. Gosh, we are getting deep on a mm. Monday morning. What am I even saying? <laughs> this isn't me. And, You've and you lost know, all uh, your fan base now. I know, that's it again. We'll see what we're all talking God. about now. This is not talking about Doctor Who. I'm off now. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think he's some kind of guru or something? Well, it is actually my job, people. But uh, yeah, you know. yeah, they just don't know that. But <laughs> it's, it's interesting that. what you say there about you know Botox and things like that, and that kind of mm. pressure, I suppose, to to look a certain way. But I, I always kind of think, you know, when you when you're an actor, so much of it is in your face, and if you can't move it properly, <laughs> you know, how how yeah. can you act the that? same way? And, and yeah. you see it in you know on TV and in in films, you know actresses particularly and and I think it's you know it's quite sad really to you know feel that need to you know pump yourself full of stuff and you know change the the, the way you are a little bit to to fit you know somebody else's idea yeah someone what, else's yeah. idea mm. and it market yeah. expectations and stuff like that you know and it's you know it's exploited the, the fear everybody I mean that's how the world is run isn't it it's sort of exploitation of exploitation of, of people's mm. various fears and mm. you know uh, I mean there are plenty of people who manage to have little bits and pieces done I, I you know I'm sure that you you know you'd never know but it, it at what point I suppose do, does it does it become something where it's where it's just fight mm. fending off the inevitable there's a brilliant 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 film that you must watch um called Memento Mori and it's with oh, um, uh, yes. Rennie Asherson and Stephanie Cole. It's got this incredible cast. Who was the old voice of power? Michael Horden. It's got a just brilliant, brilliant cast. And it's all about um, these, it's all old people. And mm. it's all, they're all in, a, they're all um, sort of graduate, sort of dying off. But somebody <laughs> keeps leaving notes, yeah. um, uh, which just say memento mori. You know, I rem remember you will die or I remember yeah. I die or and um and it's it's a br it's just brilliant and it's sort of very funny in the way Zoe Wanamaker as well she doesn't say it, oh, it's brilliant. Brilliant, it? Yeah, um yeah. and um and it's just brilliant about the kind of the fear of the fear of aging and death and how it's kind of at the core of everything from such a young age so now I, ha I haven't really lightened the topic <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get there but fear of <laughs> aging and death i just heard come out of my mouth and was like well no but you know i i think um you know when you're younger you obviously don't really think about it do you at all but you know getting older now like my knees hurt uh, you know and my hair's going gray and you know what all that kind of stuff. yeah well you know <laughs> pull, pull your far more down the line Wait, than, than we yeah, are, yourself. You know? <laughs> i've already told my kids that i want to be i want to continue as a brain in a jar so my my youngest daughter, I, I've tasked her with finding an appropriate bell jar. I will source the formaldehyde or whatever fluids are needed. But as long as she retains my googly eyes, so the brain in a jar with the googly eyes and place it on her mantelpiece so yeah. I can watch TV 
um th- then and it's you fine. need your name around your neck like futurama didn't you the kind of yes um, that's yeah, that's what i'm gonna do i'm black. gonna put that on yeah it can be engraved on the bottom of my yeah. bell jar yeah. yeah i could invent a name for myself as well you know you, you could do the the, the great and rainy oid paulus oid rainius something i don't know that's um it's just a fantasy that i have of continuing my mortality into the uh ever beyond but anyway yeah so let's lighten things up a bit then um let's talk about doctor we I, i'm not sure we quite finished talking about daleks in manhattan because we didn't talk about your singing mm. miranda so now, yes yeah. please tell us so um, i'm gonna forget his name murray gold <laughs> yeah. um, i think is his name that's not quite right murray gold maybe it's yeah. just murray gold murray yeah. gold yeah, murray, murray gold, gold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. um yeah. and he i was called to his flat so this guy is he's mm. a composer and he's an amazing amazing musician he, he was the sound with. of doctor who for yeah. for years in the, the modern series and he record and he records great great singers and artists so i went to his <laughs> flat and I think he played a few notes. So my dad's a jazz pianist, so I who actually played on the track yeah. on Doctor Who. Um, right. And uh, and um, so I grew up with music and kind of singing around a piano. Mm. But you know, I think Murray played a few notes on his piano and was like, "Let's hear." And I, and and I think his reaction probably was like, "Huh," um, you know, or something uh, not very effusive. But the song was fun, and it was yeah. it was. She's not meant. She's meant to be a kind of Sally Bowlesish character. So she's not mm. meant to be, uh, you know, Barbara Streisand. Mm. She's meant to be a kind of slightly B-rated singer. Which suited me fine. Um, <laughs> so we did that. We recorded it, and it sounded quite sweet. And, and actually, when we yeah. recorded it properly, we did it with the BBC Orchestra in Wales um, with my father playing the piano, mm. uh, which is very kind of Murray to allow that um, and uh, to indulge that, I should say. Uh, and then they recorded, they did an album and, I, and yeah. I heard, oh, there's an album of Doctor Who songs coming out. And I was like, oh, amazing. And I listened to it on Spotify or on something and it was somebody else. <laughs> my <laughs> song is frankly me. rude. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that is rude. Rude. yeah. I, don't, I don't know who it is, but she's got a lovely voice anyway. Uh, and it's not me on the on the album, but it was me in the in the show. It, it was, was great. Deep. And, yeah. you know, these singers, it is a different world. If you're not, which I'm not, I would love to be a mm. brilliant singer, but I'm not. And 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 that whole musical theatre world is just a very yeah. different world. And so learning the dance and everything, you know, we had all these gorgeous professional dancers who, it was a full-on dance routine yeah, wasn't it full-on it was dance feather routine. Bow, feathers and everything going on and they thought we would rehearse that in Covent mm. Garden and Pineapple Dance Studios yeah, and yeah, and yeah. and all these um dancers saw the the choreography and then mm. did it and I was like what uh, uh, <laughs> 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 you, what is it literally <laughs> one go one thing through the yeah. whole the, the the amazing I can't remember her name either but amazing um choreographer yeah and she did she showed these girls and they all just sort of, you know, put down their knickers and were like, oh, yeah, do, 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 and did the whole thing. And I was like, no, no. So, you know, I think <laughs> it would have taken them 20 minutes and, and they had to just, they had to hold my hand through it all, which they were expecting, to be fair. I mean, if you're not in that world. Yeah, it's because you know, yeah, I've, you know, I've had dancers and stuff in videos before and, and they can mm, pick it up like, switch it on. like that, can't they? But amazing. that leads me to a question about, like learning your lines and and how how do you find that is it easy for you or do you have a sort of process that you do or you know how how's I find it would be it, the opposite for the dancers wouldn't it if they had to learn lines you know totally be... yeah I mean no I, I have to say that is one area in which I'm blessed I find <laughs> it it I, I do my my only routine is I just read it a lot Mm. and I do struggle my struggle with lines is again this is a real complaint of an old fart <laughs> um is now things get rewritten at the last minute more and oh, more yeah. <laughs> so you've really learned it and I mm. learn things early um mm. I just like to to start to sort of drip feed learn as early as possible and then by the time it comes to kind of a couple of days before yeah. brrr, you know you can just do it just rip it um, off yeah when they change things a couple of days before and mm. it's really bedded in mm. so there are some actors who really do learn their lines the night before and I used to think that's insane but I I think actually if you can be someone that learns it the night before when with all these changes happening that's great but that's not me but now it yeah 
you can sort of say, please don't give me changes too late. Because <laughs> yeah. it's not very reasonable to, to expect people to really know something and then yeah. Yeah, um, no, exactly. and rewrite it all. And, and also it kind of you know, goes back to uh, something we said earlier, but kind of having that you know, confidence in, in what you've, you know, in the script and not go mm. changing it like that. Because like, yes. I've worked with particularly presenters who some of them, you know, you can just say, here's a few bullet points. You, you craft it into the script for this bit and, and they'll make it theirs. And there's others who say, right, well, you know, I've written the whole thing, you, you learn that. And then and then there's some who you can say, actually, so this has changed now and they get it and it's fine. And then others, they've they've learned it so rigidly that you, you can't throw a change at them and it, and it, you know, throws them off course on it, which is yes. absolutely fair enough. Because like you say, Miranda, if you've learned yeah. something, you know, and I'm talking about like we've just done a take. Oh, by the way, you know, we've this has had to change. You know, yes. And and it, it is difficult, you know, when you've kind of you know got it logged there. So I find it fascinating how different people work with you know learning lines and you know delivering stuff on on screen and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. I can imagine when you've got it all you know logged in there, yeah. and, and then they change it. And then when you've done the scene, is it just gone? Does it just clear out? Yes, mostly it does. <laughs> yeah. Mostly it does, actually. And there are certain things, even with theatre, yeah. uh, um, I did a, a, I think it's the most nervous I've ever been that I might forget something, was doing, um, uh, I did A Winter's Tale with Kenneth Branagh, who uh, I played his wife, and and Judy Dench, who played Pauline, you know, it was an incredible cast oh, wow. at the Garrett yeah. Theatre. And I was playing Hermione, and I, Hermione has this trial um, mm. and the way they'd staged it was that Hermione was centre stage and the audience were the jurors and just, yeah, it's long, it's long, mm. long, long of just, this is me making my case to live. And, um, and that I, ha- I did have a few sleepless nights kind of in the weeks running up to it thinking there is no, there is literally nothing. If I, go blank and I'm looking out to the Garrick audience and you know and Judy yeah. is on stage and Kenneth Brand is there and you know and the rest of the cast yeah. everyone and and I and what what what's going to happen so anyway I learned mm. I learned I learned I learned I yeah. learned it. I knew it so that you know I could pick it up from any part or you know just and within days it had gone I, yeah. I couldn't believe it. You know, I yeah. sort of thought that will, I was sure that if anything was ever going to retain. Yeah, that you could recite in 20 years time. Yeah. That would be I, it. But no, I, I think um, it's it's fascinating. And, you know, you can remember such massive chunks of stuff and, and then it's it's gone afterwards. And, you know, I can't do that, you know, at all. I remember at my, uh, at my wedding. I had learnt my speech, right? And, and my best man, he said, "Oh, I just oh. made mine up on the spot." So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to. And uh, my my best no man way. said, I'll, "I'll print and laminate a copy for you." I went, "I don't need that. It's, it's in here." And, and I spent weeks doing it. And I stood up and I looked out and I thought, "What am I doing?" <laughs> And he yeah. just he slid this laminated sheet over, and I was like, "Thank you." Oh, <laughs> great! Brilliant. Oh, good. So, yeah, but, yeah. Totally. You know, I, I find it, you know, really difficult to kind of you know take it but that's not that's not my job really so but I think it's yeah really impressive that you can remember such kind of big chunks of of stuff like that so you've done uh, a huge range of stuff really haven't you Miranda from you know features to to tvs you know guest spots and and arcs and you know whole series and theatre work what's been what what do you love most and and what's been some of your favorite stuff that you've you've worked on that's a question that the sounds, best... that's, sounds a simple question, but actually two questions yeah. actually. Yeah. Yeah. Quite big, yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well, so so that that feeling that I think we all have in life now and again, it comes mm. very, you know, where a sort of the symbiote, I don't know if symbiosis is the right word, but where you sort of think time, space, everything kind of comes together in last a few seconds and you go, This is <clears throat> this is where I'm supposed to be. The mm. most intense mm. moment I've ever had of that inner job was on stage at the Globe Theatre playing Anne Boleyn. Oh, wow. And it was a play by Howard Brenton called Anne Boleyn. Yeah. And, um, and I hadn't done a play for seven years and came back to that because I'd just been doing Spooks and other series and and um, and came to... to I was playing Anne Boleyn and Henry VIII also at the Globe, which was a slight, we did that a few nights before because mm. they were in rep. So I'd kind of been on the stage and kind of gone, ah, oh, and talked too quietly and went off again. <laughs> and um, 
And then Anne Boleyn was really, I had to come on and just talk to the globe, you know, which is kind of in the round. And she comes on with her head in a bag um, uh, and sort mm. of pulls out this head and talks to the audience. And, uh, you know, for a long time, and then the play begins. And I remember being out there and just all fear kind of going and feeling like I was the luckiest person on the planet. I was just like, this is, to- this is, I'm not religious or spiritual at all. Mm. But I've, well, I don't know, I'm not spiritual. I don't really know what spiritual is. But, you know, I, I remember thinking I have a direct line to Shakespeare. I have a kind of, you know, I just remember yeah, feeling yeah, like the yeah. whole thing was oh, kind of, wow. and just seeing these beaming faces, you know, supportive faces yeah. looking looking back. Um, and also the second half of that play was was outdoors in the dark, all just candle lit and everything. And I think some of those evenings were just... Um, the best I've ever felt, mm. you know, in life, just just total magic and total yeah. kind of um, a p- real pure love for doing what you know for acting. Wow. Um, and in terms of screen stuff, um, I, I I probably the most I've enjoyed doing a series w- is a series that wasn't wasn't recommissioned. It's called Spotless, and it was for Netflix. Um, and Canal Plus, and it has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was, still does. It was very, right. you know, uh, well reviewed oh, and popular. Yeah. But it was a, another change of production company. Change, you know, it just was one of those things that it, 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 for political reasons, didn't happen again. Um, but I loved the character, and it was the first kind of grown up. I'd always played sort of lawyers and lawyers and policewomen and spies and yeah. you know who were kind of the rookie or the and suddenly I kind of graduated to the next stage of woman and had these two <laughs> kids it was before I had kids but yeah only just before I had kids. and I had a kind of 13 year old and a 10 year old suddenly and this sort of family um and and I just it was it was London I think London this is a really long answer to your question but I think London <laughs> is an amazing city I filmed all over the world, really. And I think London is an amazing city for filming. When you get London at your disposal, mm. it's like another character in a show. You know, yeah. it's sort of so... Um, it's, it's just... Well, it's got everything. It's full yeah. of everything. And all these little corners and all the history and all the... You know, and when you've got good locations, people who find you a, mm. a rubby little alleyway or yeah. a, under filming under Hammersmith Bridge or... You know, wherever you might be, you know, that, that you might have access to that you wouldn't have access to if you weren't filming. It's like yeah, a special yeah. world almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Totally. And normally on a Sunday, you know, Sunday is the day in London when you're filming where you're you're there on a Sunday because you're in a location that would otherwise be unavailable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you get the these incredible... Look at us, yeah. we're kind of privileged yeah. in That's here. You know? Yeah, yeah. We're occupying this space. Is yeah. do, do you have any sort of... Because, uh, I mean, you, you've you, you played characters across many genres. I know you're saying, like, uh, police and spies, and there are, there are a few of those, but you, you've done... Yeah. A, I mean, I'm, I'm just looking at your... Um, your 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 sheet your IMDb list it's massive it's immense <laughs> so many things do do you have any any favorites um genres or you know do you prefer something above another or you just like to keep it mixed up i just mixed up really mm. genuinely i mean i think there is some truth in what people say about like filming comedy is quite a serious business mm. and yeah. filming um serious business is is just <laughs> ridiculous you know in my experience you kind of the, the more intense yeah. the scene the stupider you are on the day <laughs> you know um so it, and 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 so mixing it up and also even just between the genres you know theater mm. and television I'd love to do more film I have I've done I've had you know lead roles or been number one on the call sheet in in smaller films but I've yeah. never had like the lead in a big movie you know um which would be nice. <laughs> um, but, you know, theatre reminds you that you're part of a company and that mm. you're all as important as each other, which you really are, because, you know, if you've if you've got six lines in a play and you don't say them mm. at the right time or you... It affects everything. Energy, mm. It affects everything. Mm. Um, and and then that's a good energy to bring to, to filming, which doesn't inherently have that same kind of everyone is mm. equal you know there isn't really there might be a number one dressing room I suppose in the theatre I've never had it um, but there's you know <laughs> let's the, start the, that campaign right now yeah. yes exactly <laughs> um but you know the number number one on the call sheet is yeah. um 
uh, is it can be. As I was saying about David Tennant, you know that mm. you, you can have a tricky, a tricky number one, and and I think um, something number one, but <laughs> <laughs> um, you know it, it, they're unlikely to come from a theatre yes, background. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, you know if if you've got that person, they probably haven't spent a long time doing doing theatre. Yeah. You know. So so is is working with Big Finish kind of like the theatre where you a group so. of friends and you're you're all kind of part of the same and because I know you do um you, you do lots of other voices and what, yeah, what's what's yeah. that called Jeff where um voices provided by other members of the cast and that way did you do that where you yeah. play the yeah. monsters that was oh yeah well, for big finish yeah absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. you do the yeah. kind of you know um the whatever you call it the ensemble kind of yeah afterwards and yeah, everybody's the, the screaming, screaming villagers yeah yeah yeah, yeah yes. totally, totally. <laughs> yeah. no no that's a, that's the big finish you know definitely that's the big finish way you you, you would and of course you don't need to, to learn lines as such with them either do you so no exactly so that's mm. great um and uh yeah it's 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 the most fun. It, it is, you know, the kind of gift that keeps on giving. It's it, the, the, the doctor having done Doctor Who in the first place. Mm. Um, and I think Big Finish asked me because of the television mm. Doctor Who. And then, and then, yeah, just you go in and you, and it's a, it's definitely quite a theatre atmosphere. And they, I think, deliberately use a lot of theatre actors as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, most people tend to have that kind of background, I think. Because it's in the voice performance, yeah. isn't it? That, that's everything. It doesn't it's, matter kind of what you look like, what expressions you pull, yeah. unless they help you form the voice, I guess. But yeah, is it quite? Is it quite freeing doing it, Miranda? Because you can go in and you in your joggers or whatever, and <laughs> yes. you don't need to learn anything particularly in in advance. I guess you know there's been character work and stuff, but when you you get yeah. the script, you know you you've got it in front of you, and so and you can be as kind of free and as big as in the silly as you want with it because yes. there's no audience and you can you know it's not on camera and actually or the only way to not feel silly is to feel free with it mm. because and I think that's another reason for using that big finish use a lot of actors who who do theatre is they're less likely to come in and go oh I feel silly you know it, the only thing that's mm. awkward doing that kind of recording is if you have somebody there going, oh, I don't, I don't want to scream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've, you've got to give yourself ah! to it, you? Yeah. you know, yeah, you yeah. just got to go for it. And yeah. and if you go for it, you're very likely. If you go for it too much, um, you're the worst that will happen is people will laugh and they'll say, oh, mm. that was awesome. Let's just scale it back a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, whereas if it's sort of like, <laughs> <laughs> and not enough. It's more, um, it's a more, yeah. can you, do you think we could, yeah, you know, it, that becomes a bit more of a kind of kid gloves yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah. Thing. Um, so, yeah. Um, well, I was going to wait, wait to ask this, but um, when are we uh -oh. going to hear Mrs. Clark next? So I don't know. I'm recording. I'm, I'm mm. actually um, uh, recording uh, another one in January. Oh. Um, and, we've been, and I've been recording a few in lockdown. Yeah. Um, I shouldn't say lockdown. You know what I mean. Over the last, <laughs> <laughs> whenever. Um. So, uh, but I, I know they've got a lot in yeah. the bag. Uh, for for I think across the board, mm. when they come out, I'm not quite sure. I think yes. there are some that aren't coming out for a long time. Mm. That tends to um, happen, doesn't it? Kind of bank yeah. them up a little bit. Yeah. We, we were I talking the other so. day that Tom Baker's done loads, but yes. you know they'll be they'll be coming out over years. You know. Yeah. And um, we spoke to Lauren Cornelius recently, and and she was saying she'd done stuff and. You know, but didn't know when it would be coming out. It'd be sometime later. Um, yeah. well, but I'm excited that um, there's going to be more. Um, that's, that's yeah, really good. I hope. And you know, and I don't think they've. Yeah, I don't think they've sent her off to a vortex yet. No, so. good. Well, I think it's that diamond thing. You know, Superman two, the thing that they yeah. locked you yes. in. Yes. Yeah, what's it Phantom called? Zone. Fa yeah, Phantom Zone, the, uh, that's it. The negative zone is the one <laughs> in, in Marvel stuff, yeah. Oh, right. Um, I really like the um, the box set with the 11 that, that you guys did. So the, that was oh, really I fun, actually. I meant to say that with, with, so you, with mm. your um, uh, person who asked the question about what, what would you like them to write more of or, yeah. or to write, doing that, having constant split into 11 different personalities, yeah was quite a good thing because yeah. you know then you're embarking on something and when oh, wow. I did it actually from home because we were all recording from right. home at that point yeah. and um so you're kind of doing it on your own and it was like Constance one I, uh, I know uh, writing all the different what, what they could sound like I yeah. suppose and then it's like okay 
go, you know, and uh, and just all, all, all that's written on the page is constant one, constant three, constant six, constant yeah, right. you know, so you're kind of um, that was pretty wild, but it yeah, was the, so fun. the eleven is a is a great character. I, I think it's it's genius, really. You know, yeah. all, the, all the personality still active. Um, yeah. uh, here's a question: When you were doing those recordings, were you ju- you were just on your own and and you couldn't hear the others? They were you recording could. separately. You could. They, oh, they, you they, could. Okay. You could hear the others. They, so, That's big good. finish. Lots of things that I record, particularly computer games and things. Um, mm. I believe they're called video games by people under eighty. <laughs> <laughs> they uh well you'll do your own stuff right yeah. um but yeah with with um with so i can hear my baby crying <laughs> i'm really sorry i'm doing it's fine but i just heard <laughs> um yeah uh but what's the question i'm so uh, sorry that's yeah, was, the brain gets say, split is, in is, two <laughs> is it difficult doing lines when you haven't got the other person <laughs> feeding opposite you but I suppose maybe for video games. Oh, like yeah. That, so, but... so not so much. So, yeah. So, for, for video games and, and for those things, it mm. is, they are those kind of cues, and you can imagine how they sound. Mm. Everything does sound like quite a standalone line, doesn't it, in a, yeah. in a video game yeah. um, uh, for the most part? Whereas Big Finish, it's very important to them to have everybody recording. That, yeah, that's um, what I would have thought. I, I, I can't imagine, I can, well, I, I can imagine it'd be really difficult to try and, you know, deliver lines with emotion. Yeah. In in dialogue when you haven't got the other person there to, yes. to feedback or opposite. So yeah. Yes. What makes me laugh sometimes when when that's done though is when the other actor isn't available and they have somebody standing in to read the lines. Yeah. And and every time I've seen that on an outtake, it's always the person reading the lines is uh, just literally reading the literally lines. Reading, yeah. <laughs> so you yeah. have the actor yeah. doing no all the actually saying. stuff. Yeah. The someone who's goes, um, yes, that was amazing. Um <laughs> yes, let's do it again. No. Yes, was, let's do it again. I love it. That was locked down for my poor husband because he's like the <laughs> least, he's the least actually person in the whole world. And he, <laughs> he learned about this awful thing called self-tape. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, and the kind yeah. of the oh. poor, poor guy. I actually did miraculously get a couple of the jobs, but they were him sort of there going. Mm. And he's French. So so actually the cup and and so it sounds sort of boastful, but but I do um uh work in French a bit too yeah, right. and um and so for those it's great because somehow just the fact that he speaks French it sounds much more natural but yeah when yeah, yeah, do, yeah. doing the, the whole exactly that you know and yeah I don't know whatever playing a policeman or playing something he just he'd rather <laughs> he'd rather the world swallowed him up <laughs> <laughs> um I'm aware that um you've probably got to go in a, in a few minutes so um tell us a little bit about Warrior quick oh yes so Warrior actually has a kind of an amazing history to it it was a an original idea by bruce lee mm. who um was going to play this our sam the, the lead character in, in in the show that he had devised uh and at the last minute really quite last minute i believe they said actually you know nobody wants to see an asian man as the lead in a tv show and they cast david carradine and called it kung fu Mm. which was a kind of cult 70s show. That was, yeah, I remember that um, being around in the 70s. My yeah. dad used to watch it. I oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He yeah, was yeah. sorry, but he loved it. Every I think it was Saturday very popular. Was and, and I think, you know, Dave Carradine's obviously amazing, but um, mm. but uh, it was um, not the show that, that was not what was intended to happen. Yeah. So uh, Shannon Lee, um, Bruce Lee's daughter, and Justin Lin, the producer of the Fast and the Furious films, uh, yeah. kind of came back um in 2016 and said we're going to make this show as Bruce Lee intended so it's set in the Tong Wars of San Francisco 1880 um and they started they they filmed the pilot 2016 I think they started shooting 2017 I joined in uh, for the second series yeah um and uh and I play a a kind of wealthy gun-toting widow um, who? Well, no. I mean, she's she's uh, she's based on a real woman called yeah. Donaldina Cameron, who rescued the um, the Chinese child prostitutes from the crib brothels in China. Okay. Yeah. And uh, she was an extraordinary woman, Donaldina Cameron. They've kind of sexed her up a bit for. I mean, <laughs> like that. I just mean, you know, they've kind of they've you know my character's you know uh, gay and 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 has quite a lot of intrigue about her that yeah. um, maybe Donaldina Cameron um, didn't certainly not on Wikipedia, um, but. They, uh, yeah, 
yeah so 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 we we didn't think that it was going to go again we all filmed yeah. all in cape town and obviously cape town was very hard hit with covid and everything yeah. and so it was it was nearly three years between season two and season yeah, three yeah, but we oh, just wow. season three uh, yeah, yeah yeah you mentioned earlier that um uh, you, mm. so you did then the covid kind of broke it yeah, up and stuff. yeah yeah so we just um, got back in november so yeah. right brilliant yeah did I, you I get to wear the whole kind of like um period costumes and stuff like that yeah. must be a lot of fun of course it's of course it's a quite handy when you've had a baby five weeks <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. what you need <laughs> yeah 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 no they are actually are. um but uh yeah so, so it's all you know yeah um, and it's and it's a big big scale big budget quite lavish, big isn't it? Cast. there are 18 main casts so actually really? if you have wow. just had a baby and you're going back to work it's quite nice to have 17 yeah. other people to share Screen yeah, time, yeah, was, yeah, um, yeah, because yeah. I had a lot of days most days. Is, um, is the show available over here? I looked it up, tried to find it the other day. And so I I'm find used it, to any... questions like this. I know, so it's on HBO Max, which obviously isn't over here, no, but I think yeah. it was on Sky One okay. here. But I think now that it's it's been taken over, so it was Cinemax for HBO and it's now just an HBO show, right. which I think means it will be on Sky Atlantic. Okay. Um, when it comes out, and that, and then I think they're going to rerun the first. Two so maybe, maybe they'll do that then. Um, to the new one. Yes, uh, but, oh, but I'm not actually sure. It. It's the kind of thing okay. I should know the answer to. <laughs> no, well, not that. No, you know, <laughs> it's uh, especially. I guess the third series is going to be next year sometime. Yeah. If, if you've only just shot it, so yes, yeah, hopefully exactly. we can catch yeah. it. Yeah, that's quite good. I'm just looking at it there. Yeah, it does. It does look good. Right, yeah. I must straight that one. I yeah. think I'll yeah, give yeah. that yeah. one. It's fine, Jeff. It's good fun. It's pretty. It's Nothing Fine. much else to do during the day these days, you know, just uh, watch a right. little bit of telly, go out for a little walk yeah. with the dog and uh, get the milk on the way home. But let's just come back for watching Warrior. I like yeah. that. I would, yeah, it'd be great. Sorry, I don't know where that came from. Just now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I hope I say this one. Sister Boniface Mysteries yes. looks like a lot of fun. Um, oh, yes. So is it, it's just one series that so far. Is there, is there more to So, to, so, uh, Yes, so they've just finished filming the second series, which I, which sadly was at the same time as Warrior. So I did go and do some of it, which was mm. really lucky because I thought they wouldn't be able to have me for any of it. Okay. But um, but I, I did go and do some, and I, <clears throat> I hope they'll have me back again. Brilliant. Um, yeah. we'll see. Yeah. And video games as well. Cassandra Prent Prentagast. Yes, yes. Yeah. Cassandra Prentagast. Yeah. Yes. So, I, so yeah, yeah, I I I'd I'd um I haven't got any video games lined up it's just sort of busy times, but I'd love to. I love doing it. And Cassandra yeah. was awesome. Doing Dragon Age was brilliant. I love it. I I haven't I, I have dabbled in Dragon Age, but a friend of mine absolutely loves it to bits right, and right. thinks, you know, it would probably spend all his time in that world if yeah. he could. <laughs> so. yeah well there's there's a lot of sex and drag it's funny i didn't That's know probably why about I video it, games honest, until yeah. i did it but you can kind of as the as the inquisitor yeah you know there's a there's a male inquisitor and female inquisitor and you can kind of go around and you can sort of just as a like interlude you can kind of choose to make love with that person or have mm. a you know a, a I think they have even different versions of that you can have a more yeah, tame, like, like handle it dinner with so-and-so or, yeah. or something like kind of dating the games yeah. these days are not like what we played when we were oh, they're, they're quite intense yeah, yeah. yeah. i'm, I'm yeah. playing an rpg at the moment actually which i which is starting to take over i wouldn't say it's totally taken over my life but i can see how 90%. it could 90 percent. <laughs> right. it has actually taken over my life who am i kidding you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. Plays about two o'clock in the morning till i fall asleep with my controller go, um. yeah 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 it's not good <laughs> <laughs> So uh, what are you working on next, Miranda? Can you tell us or is it top secret? So uh, I, it's sort of secret only because we haven't sort of quite done the oh. deal yet. Um, okay. But it starts next February and okay. is in the UK. Okay. And, um, mm. and uh, yeah, just need to work it all out with family and all that kind good of role, thing. Good role, good juicy role to get nice, your teeth into. Yeah, nice role, nice role yeah. and, and sort of, um, you know, with a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of a nutty edge to her. Ooh, okay. oh, yeah. is it, is it, I shouldn't say anything else. Yeah. <laughs> is it, is it nutty film edge. Or, or TV? TV. Okay, all right. That sounds interesting. TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, Brilliant we, stuff. We should probably let you go. We we know you've got family there and Christmas to prepare for and all of that sort of stuff. So it's been an absolute pleasure it talking really to you. Thank you. And you too. Do, do you know, quite often when we talk to people, 
we feel genuinely like we we could talk for ages and in it you know kind of only scratch the surface of stuff and you know and, and it's fascinating talking to people so yeah m- maybe we can do this again another time love to thank Brilliant. you for having me yeah you're welcome thank you very much brilliant thank you Have miranda it's been an absolute delight and a pleasure thank you so much